Whether you've snagged your sleeve or it's been munched by moths, holes happen to the best of us. There are many, many ways to mend holes, and we thought we would share some of our favourites. Darning, Swiss darning, near invisible mends and visible mends to make these mishaps into a brand new feature. Darning using a weaving technique is probably the kind of mending that first comes to mind when you think about darning. It creates a woven patch across most types of holes. All you'll need from your care and repair kit is your darning needle and lamb's wool yarn. First off, create tension using whatever method you find suits you best. You can use an embroidery hoop, a darning mushroom, and if you don't have any of these, you can simply use a tennis ball or even an orange. I'm going to show you you don't need any fancy tools for this, so I'm going to use an orange for this mend. Secure whatever you are using for tension under the hole. I'm going to use my scrunchie. This just stops the garment moving around while you're making your mend. Thread your needle and then come in a few centimetres from your hole and leave a tail to darn back in later. Start a few knit stitches away from the hole and anchor your yarn by making one small stitch before you cross the hole to create your warp. To create the warp, you simply follow that rule of knit stitches and anchor your yarn with a little stitch there too. Repeat the anchor stitch at each side of the hole, making sure our warp threads are parallel to each other. Sometimes I like to pick up some stitches from around the hole so the colour of the jumper will be included in the visible mend. And then it is just a case of repeating this process until the hole is covered, creating the warp of this weave. We then repeat the process in the opposite direction, but taking our needle under every second warp. Creating the weft of this weave until we have a woven patch. I'm going to go in and out with another colour just to fill any holes and to better match the weight of the knitwear. And the end result is a beautiful visible woven mend. When you're done, turn the garment inside out and darn in all the tails that you left by repeating the same process at the back. Don't worry, you don't need to tie any knots. This will be secure. You can use this woven technique to try and create a near invisible mend, but bear in mind this is a different structure to the knitwear, so it will be a different texture. Now we're going to focus on Swiss darning. It's really similar to duplicate stitch as it also follows the path of the original knit stitches, but you would use this method when there is an actual hole to mend. All you'll need from your care and repair kit is your darning needle and wool. Again, I'm going to use an embroidery hoop to keep the tension on the knitwear, but you can use a darning mushroom, a tennis ball, or even an orange to apply the appropriate tension. You want to come in a few centimetres from where you want to begin and leave a tail to darn back in later. Come up through the middle of your first knit stitch, making sure this is a few stitches away from the hole. We are then going to set up the foundation strands. These will stop any laddering and provide a structure to then stitch over. Come up from the middle of a knit stitch, follow that column of stitches and then take your needle under that knit stitch at the top. Then take your needle back to the bottom and take your needle back through where you originally came up and then take your needle under that stitch. Repeat that process until you come to the other side of the hole. Notice unlike when darning using the weaving technique, these threads are not supposed to be parallel, but a little more zigzagged. For the first row, we're going to do duplicate stitch. This will just anchor the repair to the jumper. If you need a reminder of how to do that, you can go back to duplicate stitch and follow along with the video. Alternatively, there will be written instructions at donnawilson.com forward slash repair, so you can follow along in your own time. For the first stitch of the second row, we're also going to be doing duplicate stitch. When it comes to the second stitch where the hole is, we pick up the shoulders of the lower two knit stitches and then under the two foundation strands, then picking up the shoulders of the lower two knit stitches. This is the Swiss darning technique, which allows you to create a knitted structure over the hole. And repeat. 
So to anchor this Swiss darning technique to the garment, we have to use duplicate stitch on the first and last row and on the first and last stitch of every row that comes between them. And the results are a lovely visible mend that match the structure of the original knitwear. Again, you can choose a similar colour and thickness of yarn to make a near invisible mend or a yarn in a whole other colour to make a visible mend. Visit us on our website where you can get your hands on one of these care and repair kits along with written instructions on this technique.